I'm Colleen Demling and I've been an animal trainer for over 10 years. I've trained thoroughbred horses, therapy dogs, and three pound chihuahuas in diamond studded collars. Over the years, I've developed a soft spot for our smallest furry friends, the ones that warm our laps. But small dogs have big attitudes and I'm here to show you what the world looks like from their point of view. Small dogs sometimes have the biggest bark, and just like some people, they don't always know the most appropriate way to communicate. So I'm here today with my friend Susan, and we're gonna help her show Mimi how to stop barking through positive reinforcement, consistency, and discipline. Okay, Susan, so tell me what's going on with Mimi. Well, she, she seems to bark a lot um, when I'm gone, or when she wants me to be back in the room with her, or if she wants to get on the bed, or if she's excited. Okay, so what I think is going on with Mimi is I think she has a little issue of who's in charge. She's not quite sure if you're the mom or the maid. <laughs> so she's, she's not sure quite what's going on, and what's, what's wrong is that dogs don't normally under, well, they don't understand English. Mm -hmm. And so you're sitting there and you're telling her, no, Mimi, no, 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 stop it, don't bark, mom doesn't like that, I'm making the bed, you're, you're giving her all this explanation, she just hears blah, 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 Mimi, and who's getting all the attention? Me. Mimi, exactly, oh. she is. So she's getting reinforced for the barking. But what it can also do, especially with little dogs, is it can increase their anxiety, because they learn that's one of the only ways to get attention, is through barking or woofing or whining. Definitely, and right now when you said the anxiety part, there is a bit of anxiety sometimes in that little nervous, you know, excited bark, there is also anxiety. Mm -hmm. I so, just made that realization. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's just not sure what the rules are, what's mm -hmm. going on, and so she is, with a lot of small dogs, since they're not large inside where a lab can kind of run up to you and push you and jump on you and get in your face and you can get attention that way, young, do small dogs mm -hmm. go to towards vocalization. Mm -hmm. Because if she whines, you're likely to say, what do you want? Which I do all the time. And then she thinks, I whine, I get mom's attention. I whine, I get mom's attention. I whine, wait, she's yelling at me. Yeah. My mom's crazy. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Which helps to bring out that behavior in even more. So that's what we're going to address a little bit today. Okay. The Great. command we're going to teach her first is leave it. Leave it basically means don't touch something. And what it helps her learn is there, even though there's tons of things around, like the treats that I want, the bed I want to jump on, you coming and going, there's times when mom's going to tell me I can't have it and I just can't have it. It just helps to defer attention to you. Okay. okay. So here's her favorite little treat. Come here, girl. I'm going to put it on the bed and I'm going to tell her to leave it. Okay. She's obviously going to try to go for it. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's like, I love this, <laughs> is my favorite treat ever. I was going to tell her no and gently push her back. The key is not to get louder, it's just to be firm, okay? So this is what it's going to look like. Mimi, leave it. Uh-uh, leave it. Good girl. Good girl. And if you can see, her tail's wagging because I'm now showing her no, leave it. Good girl. I'm showing her a positive way to get attention, which is ultimately what she's looking for. The second thing you're going to do to help with this is if you tell her leave it and she doesn't, you're going to let her drag a leash around for about a week. You're just going to step on the end of the leash because that will prevent the chase game, and you're going to put her in the bathroom for a two-minute timeout. Okay. She's barking and woofing to get your attention. Yeah, I was just going to ask. <laughs> right? So if you put her in the bathroom, she'll start to learn bark and woof separation instead of bark and woof. Attention. Okay, it's kind of like giving a child a timeout. Okay. Do you want to throw a tantrum? You throw a tantrum, you're going to stay in your room till you're and quiet. And I'm going to ignore you. And I'm going to ignore you. And when you decide to be an adult, you can come out and join us again. Okay. okay. Great. Good. So try that, and she's going to show great improvement. Planning a relaxing vacation to a tropical island, or a weekend getaway to Vail. Or maybe you just work long hours and you don't want to see your little one sitting home alone all day. Well, we have the place for you. Today, we're at Fido & Company, a luxury canine country club that offers daycare, spa, and grooming services so that your little one will be happy and relaxed when you get home. So when you're looking for that perfect doggy daycare for your little dog, there's some quick tips to keep in mind. First, make sure you have an educated staff. There's going to be a lot of dogs in action going on, and you want to make sure that they're going to be able to stop that little argument from becoming a huge fight. <laughs> Tip number two, make sure your little ones are separated from the big dogs. You don't want that lab to accidentally hurt your Yorkie while they're playing fetch. <laughs> and finally, look around, look at the enclosure. You want to make sure there's a solid wall or that the bars are close together so there aren't any escape artists or there's no way for your little dog to get his small paw or head stuck as he's playing. So we're here with Lisa and Budkiss. Now Lisa, this is a serenity room. 
I don't even have a serenity <laughs> room. Well, well not, not many of us do. Um, this is uh, all for the dogs. And, and they, you can tell he's enjoying they it. They love it here. They really do. Well, this, this is where we do our, um, our spa treatments. We do massage and Reiki. Um, we also do our potty cares and our facials in here. Well, now, do you have to be a dog? I mean, I could use a massage I know. I know. <laughs> some of these treatments, too. Actually, we do we do a spa day for you and your dog. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And what are some of the benefits? Buck is here so relaxed. Oh, He's he almost is. falling asleep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we do it kind of fun sometimes just for, you know, like a spa service, like a serenity um, treatment. But we also um, do it for therapeutic reasons. Um, we, have, we work with a massage therapist here. She's a registered RN. Oh, wow. And she's been um, doing this for about 15 years, and she works only on dogs. So as you look for that perfect daycare for your little dog, keep in mind the golden rule. If you wouldn't leave your child there, don't leave your dog there. For those dogs that weigh less than 15 pounds, sometimes it's hard for their little legs to keep up with ours. So if you're constantly on the go and you want your furry friend right by your side, you may want to consider a stylish purse. We're here today in San Diego, California at Tags for Dogs and Cats. If you're looking for a purse that's stylish, functional, and you want your dog to like it, follow me. Today we're here with Carl and Cooper who own Tag for Dogs and Cats. Now Carl, I see tons of purses here. Beautiful purses, different colors, different styles. And as you're considering what kind of purse to get your pooch, what are some style factors that you look for? One of the things you want to take into consideration is support. When you're doing some everyday shopping, just hanging around around town, this is a great bag because this is actually the bag that I use for Cooper. It's great because it has a nice wide shoulder strap. It's easy on your shoulders, that's it's great. easy on your back. And then, to put him in, you just drop him in the bag like that. Now that's so big, how, are you, how do you know that he's not just gonna jump out, well, he's gonna go see a doggy friend and oh, take yeah. off on his own? <laughs> well, safety's a huge factor when you're okay. taking into consideration the bags. All the bags actually come with the safety strap inside of them. So that will prevent him from, if he tries to jump out, you have a second to grab on exactly. him and keep him in the bag. And that, and that keeps him obviously from jumping out. It also keeps him nice and safe out of harm's way. Well now this is a great bag for around town to go shopping, to hang out with your friends mm -hmm. and do lunch. But let's say I want to go to Napa Valley for the weekend and I'm heading up to San Francisco. Okay. It's probably not a bag you want to take to the airport. No, this is obviously not airline approved. So is this one then? This one is a fantastic okay, bag. This is, this is brand new. We're really excited about this. What's nice about this is that it has two handles on it, so as you're putting your dog underneath the seat, there's that. There's not a lot of tipping. There's not a lot of tipping. <laughs> That's not fun for your dog. But then it also does, it does come with a great shoulder strap that you can attach. I have to tell you, I am in love with this bag. This bag's great because you have the versatility of, once again, there's the strap inside that can keep calm dogs in like Cooper safe, but then more than anything else, if the dog's feeling a little bit more insecure, you can just zip, zip them up right the up. Zip the window. Zip them, and then they still have the, the window for a lot of breathability inside the bag. Right. On the top, the top of the bag is great because it has all these incredible grommets on it. Once again, breathability okay. is so important. So just to recap, there's a few things you want to keep in mind when picking the perfect purse for our pooch. First is support. You want to make sure you have a good shoulder strap that you're, so you're not constantly shifting your dog around because then no one's going to have fun and your dog's not going to want to go with you. Second is functionality. What do you want to do with the bag? If you're traveling around town, you can use something more open air, something more with a sling so the dog can see out and see what's going on. If you are taking that weekend trip to San Francisco, you want something with a little more substance. Finally, more importantly, style. You have to make sure that you look good so your dog looks good. And you know what? I look fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> so now that we've found the perfect purse for our dog, let me give you some quick tips on how to make sure your pooch is as comfortable as Cooper is. First, use treats. If the dog thinks he'll get a treat every time he gets in the purse, he's going to love being in his purse. Second, make sure the first time your dog's in the purse, it doesn't mean you're taking him to the vet or in an eight-hour shopping trip. He's not going to have any fun, then the next time you pull it out, he's going to run for the hills. Third, make sure to leave your bag out so that your dog gets used to the bag, what it looks like, what it feels like, so when he does actually leave home, he still feels like he is at home. I'm Colleen Demling. Thanks for joining us today, and please join us next time for another big episode of It's a Little Dog's Life.